Oskar Schindler was a businessman who joined the Nazi party and became rich by exploiting the crisis of World War II. But Schindler reached a turning point in the war, and it led him to spend over 4 million marks to keep his Jewish workers from being sent to the death camps. Schindler miraculously managed to save over 1,300 Jews during the war by using the same talents that made him a wealthy war profiteer, his flair for presentation, bribery, and above all, his grand gestures to the SS in Berlin. The German industrialist established an enamelware factory in Krakow, adjacent to the SS Force labor camp of Plazau, working with SS Hauptschauffeur Amen Goat. Due to the approaching Russian forces, the SS decided to close the camp at Plazau and send the Jews to Auschwitz. Schindler set out to establish another work camp for his workers at Brunlitz in the Sudetenland. Marcel Goldberg, Mytek Pemper, and Ishtak Stern compiled the list of names required for the new factory. With Schindler's approval of the list, the Jews were transferred to the new camp, saving them from the gas chambers. I would personally like to thank all of you for coming tonight. I know this has been difficult for each and every one of you. I have also invited the SS guards, or at least those that are left. We have about 27 with us tonight. The rest of them left a couple days ago, fearing the Russians that are coming on pretty strong toward this area. I'd like to have a few words with the SS guards, if I may. I am very, very aware of the instructions that you have to liquidate this manufacturing company and to kill off all the inmates. I am asking you tonight, will you be able to look at yourself in the mirror 30 years from now for doing this? I believe that you should do the right thing and turn and walk away. Thank you. And now I would like to address all of you, the Schindler Juden. It has been very difficult for me, but more difficult for all of you over the last eight years. I believe most of you have listened this afternoon to Winston Churchill as he made the announcement, as of tonight, five minutes after midnight, World War II will end as far as the European theater. It comes with good and it comes with bad. I realize that most of you will no longer be able to find your families. Your homes are gone. Your business is long gone. Your loved ones. But at least you have lived through this. Now, many of you have spent the last several days thanking me for saving your life. Don't thank me. Thank Isaac Stern or Marcel Goldberg or Mitrick Pimper or Abraham Brinker. These are the men that brought you through these trying times. I've worked with them. They are the ones that set up the letter. Four letters. When we were at Plazo concentration camp to send you to Bruns, where we are tonight. These are the men that you need to thank. And thank yourselves that you survived the atrocities of what occurred over the last eight years. At five minutes after midnight, you will be free. You can go anywhere you want to go. Your life has been given back to you. As far as I am concerned, I am a Nazi. I belong to the Nazi party. Not only am I a Nazi, I'm a carpetbagger. Not only am I a carpetbagger, but I have taken advantage of Jewish businesses that were foreclosed by the Nazis. And as we Germans came in, we could purchase them from the SS at a reasonable price. 
I will be hunted down. And if caught, my wife and I will be shot on the spot. I took that chance. And now I have to live with it. Some of us go back quite a few years. I go back all the way to 1948. And I believe it was at that time that I realized that I could make a lot of money, become a millionaire. And being a millionaire, I could retire very early in my life to Switzerland and enjoy a life of luxury. In 1938, when I joined the Nazi party, I was approached by the Wehrmacht army. I was also approached by the Adwehr, which was their secret spy system set up for a pre-invasion of Poland. Realizing that I was a manufacturer, a businessman, they realized that I would spend many, many days in Poland and also many days in Krakow. They thought that I would be ideal as a spy for the Wehrmacht and the Luftwaffe. And I was. Prior to the invasion of Poland by Adolf Hitler, individuals like myself would go in. We would check out where the railroads were, the bridges, the dams, the businesses. And then we relayed that information to the Wehrmacht, to the Luftwaffe, to the Abwehr. And of course, all of you know what happened on September the 1st of 1939 with the invasion of Poland. Three days after the invasion of Poland, as you are all aware, uh, you're aware of, I had an opportunity to follow the cocktails of the SS. Because of my connections with the Wehrmacht and the Luftwaffe and the Abwehr, and also with individuals that perform the armaments of the Wehrmacht, Albert Speer being one of them. I had many, many connections, which allowed me as a businessman to come in to Krakow and to buy up businesses very, very cheap. Businesses that you owned that were taken from you by the Nazis. I had an opportunity to purchase two businesses. And then I realized probably a third one would be better and because of Abraham, who's down here in front right now, he helped gather the funds. A business that he owned was turned over to me. Now, we realized that Poles, Czechs, Russians, and even Germans were very expensive to hire in my manufacturing companies. But I realized that Jews were cheap. We would have to pay the SS for any type of of Jew labor, which I was willing to do that. And so I purchased an enamel plant. We renamed it Deutsch Enamelwehr Frabach. That was the name of my company. We would produce enamelware for the Wehrmacht, for the strong army of Deutschland. Business was good. We started out with about 5,000 metric square feet. As you know, as we end this production, the last couple of weeks, we had close to 75,000 metric square feet. We grew. We grew from about 300 labor. We grew to about 1,500 in our manufacturing. In the first years of the war, I made more money than I could ever imagine. At one time, I had close to four and a half million marks. Now, I have none. At one time, I was one of the richest Germans from Sudetenland in Poland. Now, I have nothing. But it was for a good cause in my journeys and in my travel. After the Wehrmacht invaded Poland in 1939. By 1941, most of the Jews were herded into what we call the ghetto. 
there were close to 50,000 Jews. All their property had been confiscated, as you well know. All the businesses confiscated, as you well know. Everything that you had as a people were taken from you, gone forever. And I am ashamed to say people like myself came in and gobbled up what we could for our own benefit, being selfish. But something happened. I was wealthy. I had everything anybody would want in life. But a man came along, S.S. Humpshafura, Amon Goth, that changed my thinking on life and on being a human. S.S. Humpshafura, Amon Goth, was sent from Berlin, part of the S.S., to clear the Jewish ghetto. He set up a concentration camp not too far from Krakow and only 60 kilometers from Auschwitz. Palazzo. Palazzo concentration camp. It was here that the Jews that lived through that tragic night would be transferred to Palazzo. And I watched and if it had not been for Metric Pimper, who was the personal secretary of SS Amon Goth, most of you would have died that night. But because of the information that came into me, I hid you in my manufacturing building all night long, protecting you because I knew what was happening out there in the streets and the ghetto. After 24 hours of absolute hell, over 5,000 Jews were killed in the streets of Krakow. Those that survived were herded off to Plazo concentration camp. It was then that I had an epiphany. I realized what I was involved in, and I did not like it. I decided from that moment on I would do everything I could to save every life, no matter what the cost, no matter who they, they were. I became friends with SS Humpshafura Amon Goth. And I realized that he was a weak character, and so I realized that I could bribe him. And I did. Cigars, cognac, French wine, women, diamonds, gold, money. And then I started the black market, gathering everything that I could, taking it to Amon, and saying, how about we have a sub camp off of Plazo where I could take all my Jewish workers and they would be safe there and every day they could leave and march to my manufacturing buildings and then march back at night but the SS would not be allowed in my buildings and I would take care of them and I would feed them and I would clothe them which all of you can attest to that my own money with enough bribery, SS Humpshafura Amon Goth gave the okay with permission from Berlin, the armaments division of Albert Speer. As they told me, we have a war to win. Deutschland must be victorious. And I played the game. I would have the SS officers at night in my office. Plenty of cognac. Plenty of French wine, women, diamonds, everything that I could throw at them so that I could continue to do what I was doing, saving people. Then something happened. Germany was losing the war. The Russians were beginning to push in on Poland 
getting closer and closer. And as Russia was becoming closer to some of these concentration camps, Berlin decided to close them down and send everyone to Auschwitz, A, B, and C, the three camps. Anybody that was sent to Auschwitz did not live. We understand that, don't we? And then SS Hampshire Amon Goth came to me and said, Schindler, we're going to have to close down Plazo, and I'm sending 30-some thousand of the individuals here at Plazo to Auschwitz, including your people. You can't do that. We have a war to win. The Wehrmacht needs armament, anti-tank guns, weapons, casings. I need my people. I need my people. SS Hampshire Amago said, who do you think you are, Moses? I'm not Moses. But I know human life is precious. And I can still remember the commandant at Plazo looking at me and he said, Schindler, how much is one life worth? How much is one life worth to you? And by the end of the week, I had permission to move my Jewish workers to Moravia in Czechoslovakia at Bruns, another manufacturing company I own. But I had to come up with a list. And that list was very expensive. Now, I really had nothing to do with that list other than okay it. But it was because of you who are here today. Ishtok Stern organized the list. Metric Pimper was on helping that list. Marcel Goldberg, all of you got together and you formed a sacred list of names of men and women and children that would be moved from Palazzo all the way to Bruns because it was life. Otherwise, it was death. We spent two weeks on that list. We ended up with two lists, eventually four lists. Names were on, names were removed. For some reason, I don't know, but I had nothing to do with any of that other than to okay the list. Now, one final thing had to be done to move you from Plazo concentration camp to Bruns. I had to come up with four suitcases full of German marks. Close to two and a half million marks to get permission to move 1,300 Jews from Plazo to Bruns. I was content with that until something else happened. As they were shipping out my 1,300 Schindler Juden, as they called themselves, all the women, approximately 300 of them, were placed on the wrong train and sent to Auschwitz. 800 of the men placed on a train and sent to Gross Rosen, both of them death camps. I was away trying to gather food in the black market. My secretary calls me and says, Schindler, we've got a problem. Your women are heading toward Auschwitz. Your men, most of them, are heading toward Gross Rosen, another death camp. I sent two personal secretaries to both places. Each one, I gave a bag of diamonds, basically all the diamonds I had left, along with some cigars from Cuba, cognac, and whatever French wine I had left. And I got on the phone and I talked to the commandant of Auschwitz and Gross Rosen. 
I said, these are my people. I need them for war production. You need to call Berlin or call Albert Speer. I used every trick in the book that I've used over the past two or three years to help all of you. The men were released, boarded on a train, and headed to Bruns. The women stayed at Auschwitz for four weeks. Can you imagine? Some of you are here tonight. All of you are here tonight. I don't know how you felt. Because when you were there, the furnaces were raging 24-7. The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob was with you. You were released. Now, you know, and I know, but I don't think the world knows. Nobody goes to Auschwitz and walks out except through the chimney. You walked out. Thank God. Finally, all of us were reunited at Bruns. But we really didn't want Germany to win. I can say that now. We did everything we could to malfunction any armaments sent out. And here we are. How much is one life worth? How much is one life worth? But I don't want you to thank me or my wife or my, my children. We possibly will be executed. And that I probably deserve because I joined the Nazi party. I was a war profiteer. I was a carpetbagger. I came into your country to take your businesses and become a multimillionaire and retire to Switzerland. But that did not happen. And I have no regrets tonight. Here's Doc Stern, along with, I think, Metric Pimper, is that correct? Abraham Brinker? Marcel Goldberg, some other leaders, made me a ring. Some of you out there volunteered your gold teeth. And you presented me with this ring, along with a letter that I hopefully will be able to give to the Allies if we can make it to the American lines before the Russians, Russians intercept us. He who saves one life saves all in the world. He who saves one life saves the world. I thank you for that ring and I thank you for the letter that everyone in this camp signed. And hopefully we will be able to get through the Russian lines and the Czechs don't like us either. So if we can make it through the Russian lines and make it through the Czech lines and the Germans don't like me either. Pray to God that we will be able to make it to the American lines with this letter and this ring. May the world never forget what happened here from 1938 to 1945. And may the God of Abraham, may the God of Isaac and Jacob be with you in your travels in the future. And may your life be fulfilled and happy. Thank you and God bless. <laughs>